don't be a beast. No. Ah! Ah! Shoo. <laughs> fading out. <laughs> Never fade out. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. <laughs> <laughs> hello, everyone. <laughs> oh, my God. Welcome, yes, Charlie. Yeah. Oh, my God. Proper TV printers. <laughs> presenters, don't you? Okay. Um, welcome to another, another lo sing? lockdown live stream uh, with the Von Trapped family singers... Not, not singers. Not singers. <laughs> um, I'm Charlie, this is Yanina, the baby that you may or may not be able to see is a linker. Uh, that's, uh, you currently cannot. That's Leonard Cohen, the teddy bear, Ramuel the ram, uh, Bear Bear and Bear Bearette. This is my mum Polly, dad David, and my little sister Romany. And Barbunia is over there. Barbunia the dog is out of shot. Barbunia, come. Licking. He's being yeah. a little shy to that. Mm. So we've been trapped together for what five weeks now. Something Everyone like happy, good, yeah, fine. yeah, having a no fight. tension, no yeah. fighting. No What's fighting. the news? Romani turned eighteen. She's an adult now. Yes, absolutely. Day before um, yesterday. So that's exciting. I have, we have no more children. Yes, yeah. yeah. only adults. Half <laughs> <laughs> mm. Everyone's keeping pretty busy, which I think is kind of key yeah. to keeping sane um, in this scenario. I'm, I'm sure many people watching are, are, are finding similar things that having sort of projects to keep you going. Um, you've been working on the audiobook for your recently released, critically acclaimed and best-selling novel. Uh, oh, where is it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> A Theatre for Dreamers. Um, and that's been keeping you very busy trying yes, to get all the, the voices right of the Aussies. And, yes, and not, I don't want George Johnston to sound like Celeste Patterson, so that's yeah. bloody. Um, I'd see why not. Yeah, Romney's been very busy growing up. Uh, Yanina has been very busy making some stinging nettle bread. A collaboration. It was a collaboration. Should we, should we show it off to the... Yeah. Um, Charlie Gavin the nettles. It was a collaboration. Yeah, this was a quite working together on this stinging nettle bread. Um, I gathered the stinging nettles. You're not making hands. it look very majestic. Can we just say just that it was more than just stinging nettle bread, but there was gorse ice cream yeah. and... <coughs> nettle pesto. Nettle pesto. So many things yeah. from gathered um, things. All porridge. Nettle yeah. soup. Keeping, keeping busy eating the weeds. Yeah. Yeah. Weeds and seeds. Eating everything you find. Um, so, so you need keeping down this time. Yeah. So we've all been working, working together, and working together is the theme of tonight's sh whatever this is. is. This a show? I don't know. Live stream. It's a live stream, a broadcast. Um, working together creatively, artistically, uh, and otherwise. We'll have some songs. We'll have some words. We'll have some books. But before that, it's competition time. <laughs> <laughs> Answer the riddle, win a prize. <laughs> the prize in question is a, uh, this one, it's a signed version of this photograph. Uh, 
signed by Babunia the dog and Bear Bear the no, signed by the <laughs> signed by the people in the picture, and you also win a signed copy of this book. This book is actually in quite short supply, isn't it? I think it, well, it comes and goes. It, yeah. it keeps selling out. Um, so extremely, extremely valuable prize beyond the artistic merits of said book, and to win this book. And photograph. And the photograph, and it'll be sent to you. So the first person to get the riddle right wins the book, and you have to work out the connection between the passage I'm about to read and one of the characters in the book. It's a riddle, it's an Easter egg. Figure it out, first person wins the prize. And listening carefully, <clears throat> it's four in the morning, the night has turned moonless. We meet at the wells with our duffels and flasks. Leonard brings bread, some wine in straw caskets. There's music from goat bells above the dark houses. Yeah, obvious. Obvious. <laughs> Figure it out, win the book. Yeah. So, um, if we're talking about working together, we probably have to talk about you two and your creative relationship um, and that book would it have been possible without him? No, absolutely no. not. He, the, the research was so labyrinthine, and it did take it take, took more than one person to go through things. And it was so great having David mm. there holding my hand and reading stuff. There yeah. was so much to read, and also to interpret and to have someone else to bounce that stuff off. So yeah. to kind of get one of the photographs and say, "What do you think is happening here?" and to have another opinion. It was invaluable. And a song Thank actually. You. A, a song emerged from this book. It hasn't been released no. yet, but um, that's kind of an unusual. Often, uh, I mean, your your working relationship is often around music and words, yeah. and I thought we could talk about that later. So if you've got questions for yeah. them or for all of us about working together and creative relationships, get them in. We'll answer them in a bit. Yeah. Uh, with no further ado, here is uh, another... Another uh, song about song. islands. About it's about islands. a different. Yeah. It's about a Greek island, not not this Greek island, Hydra. Yeah. This is about another island called Castel yeah. um, Which, which. How long have we been doing this? God. Twenty something. Twenty something years. Yeah. Anyway, it's, yeah. a, it's a lovely place, um, Castel Orizon. We had a memorable night there at least once. This is a bit <laughs> about it, so we are, we'll give it a go. It's what? A <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Remember that night White steps in the moonlight They walked here too Through empty playground This ghost's town Children again on rusting swings getting higher Sharing a dream on an island It felt right We lay side by side Between the moon and the tide stars for a while Let the night surround you We're halfway to the stars Ebb and flow Let it go Feel her warmth beside
difference between you two there was well that I was won happening. the bet what was that about that was about um, us dis disagreeing in what the lyric should be I sing the and traditional lyric him right, making it, it up as it goes hey, along just making it up as it goes along <laughs> these, these, these things happen um, so we've got lots and lots of questions that have come in so thank you oh, I might have a um, thank you everyone for your questions um, and that's not period appropriate mother oh I have one. Oh. Uh, okay, we've okay, got one that's from, coming um, from, Paddy. from Paddy. Hello, Paddy. Thank you for your question. Oh, uh, David's phone's Someone's ringing. getting called. Can we have the phones away? This is very rude. Can I help you? It's like children. Why are you making it go bring, bring? It's an accident. Right. Well, he gets on with that. This is a question for you, I believe. Why did you choose to have a fictional narrator? And did you ever consider writing from the perspective oh. of any of the real characters? That in your book, yeah. it, it's, it's, it mixes... Uh, um, real people real and, fictional, people and people. fictional people. Paddy, that is such a brilliant question and one that obviously I love talking about. So I started by wanting actually to write um, from the point of view of Charmian Clift, who is one of the most brilliant and forgotten writers of our age. And um, I then found that actually that had already been done by someone else, and so I couldn't write from her point of view, but I couldn't let her go. And then I hit on the character of Erica, and the great thing about Erica being an 18-year-old girl was that through her eyes, I could create a portal to the world that Charmian Clift inhabited on Idra with Leonard Cohen and all the other people. So she was like a eureka moment for this book. All right, we've got a question from Cheryl Smith. Hello, Cheryl, thank you for your question. This is for both of you. Have you ever had a dream that you put into your work? Thank you, Cheryl. Oh, yes. You first. Yes. Me first, or yeah. him first? No, you first. OK, well, I, in, during, yes, I can, I know one of yours. Oh, get on with um, it. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> when we were doing, blah, blah, um, blah, when blah. we were writing the songs that became the Rattle Lock album, um, I woke up one night and I had the lines, God, I'm going to get them wrong now. It rocks you like a cradle. It rocks you to the core. It, you'll sleep like a baby while it knocks at death's door. And I had those lines when I woke up, clearly from a dream, and I kind of really liked them. And we were working on a song about Rick Wright and the, how much we missed him called A Boat Lies Waiting. And those lines just kept going round and round in my head, and I assumed that they were something that I'd read somewhere else. And then eventually I googled them and searched for them, and they weren't. They were actually given to me in a dream, and they became the part that Crosby, Nash, and David sing so beautifully on that song. Um, and are among the things I'm most proud of. Hello, sweetheart. Come to Bobo. Come to Bobo. Okay. Do you sing it? You, yeah. your yeah. dream. You had, a, you did. You, you with sorrow, didn't you? Dream the opening mm. verse of sorrow. Yeah, well, was, I think I did. Yes. Yeah. Oh. It all came flooding through after a night's sleep. Yes. But had you just yeah. been reading John Steinbeck at the time? Um, I don't think I had. 
But there is a, a the first two or three words are from the grapes of wrath. So I've never managed to find them since. No. But, yeah, but, but you just, it, it wasn't that you had a dream vision in which the lyrics appeared to you, it was more that you woke up and the <laughs> lyrics just came out of you. Uh, they, yeah, the lyrics just came out in a, in a sort of flood that's one of those strange things where you've no idea where it comes from or how it happens, but they just, five yeah. verses sort of just, it doesn't happen to me. But no, it happened on that lyrically, occasion. but yeah. but musically, yes. yeah. I guess that's the mm. thing about yeah. uh, creativity is sometimes you just don't know where it's come from. Oh, it's so, Bruno Miguel from Brazil, hello Bruno, says, Hi Polly, greetings from Brazil. Um, working with your husband, did you have, have any trouble, like creative disagreements? Oh God, never. No, never. I right. don't think so, no. Uh, <laughs> from uh, Zezo Duarte from the Netherlands, Polly. If you had to write a book with somebody, who would you choose to do? It can be somebody from the past or alive. Oh no, I couldn't write a book with somebody else. I'm, I, I, I have to be in my own little right. bubble. David, <laughs> same questioner. Did you uh, ever uh, think to do an ooh. album with Leonard Cohen in the past or an album now playing his songs? Um, listen, we're having a lot of fun. We've been playing his songs. I really, really enjoy it, but uh, um, never thought of doing an album of, of, of Leonard's songs. I never thought that Leonard needed me particularly. He mm. seemed to cope pretty adequately on his own. It's what, collaboration is one of those things where you might think that one person needed a little help from someone else and that that, in a certain way, might be able to work. I've got a question from Joe Passmore in London. Charlie, <laughs> do you work out? <laughs> well, yes, well, a little bit, but that's what you're doing. Next question. I'm very personal. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie. Who is this joke? David Carson? and Polly, what is your best memory together? Oh, Polly, Polly, Polly. Yeah, I know. All right, Romany, we'll get on to you. Really All right, skip that question. One for Romany. Uh, question for Romany. Romany says Mitch from Massachusetts. Romany, what annoys you most about Charlie? Mitch from Massachusetts. God, Mitch from Massachusetts. That's, we is everyone keep it... just really bored? Are you all trying to start fires? Yeah, they I want mean, us to have conflicts. We love each other entirely. Yeah. Earlier, Charlie plucked one of my armpit hairs out whilst I was trying to nap. <laughs> and so I chased him across. Um, <laughs> that didn't annoy you. That didn't annoy you. I chased him that around that until, that until I caught up to him and, um, and Next twisted his nipples. Question. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, okay, another one for you, Romany. Let's just ask Romany questions. Okay. <laughs> Laura. Tasky from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Very specific. Well, I wonder what it's like for Romany to sing with her dad. I'm not asking what it's like to sing with such a popular person. I want to know what it's like for a young woman to sing with her father. Do you end up laughing or is it pretty intense? Ooh. We have barrels of laughs. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's nice. Um, it's slightly terrifying because he's not one for over... Pre preparation, so he just sort of leaves you to get on with it. We haven't, yes. These things haven't been rehearsed. Right. Anyway, they're fun. Beauty. Mm -hmm. Love it. Right, next question. Uh, I wonder if we've got any live ones that come in. Please keep your questions coming in. Nope, no, not yet. <laughs> All right, keep them coming in. Better questions, please. Uh, <laughs> more questions. Um, we're going to get through as many as we can as quickly as possible. Um, since you're all together, do you schedule chores for the day or does anyone just pitch in where needed? Is anyone learning new life skills from each other during the pandemic? Says Laura Ann Wallace from Futujama. Um, let's cook. answer we new skills. Who's learning new skills? Yeah, we have a sort of cook. Everyone takes turns cooking. Romany, you've been doing a lot of cooking. Romany's been learning Once, the heart. Uh, Romany's been honest. learning the heart, I mean, actually, yeah. yeah. Romany's learning the heart. I'm trying to learn how to work this effing computer and the little <laughs> devices. So you've been learning how to be an audio book engineer. An that's audio book engineer and producer yeah. and engineer and, that's, that's and editor. A, that's an achievement. I've been growing a medicinal herb garden. Yes, yeah. That's, yeah. That sounds suspicious. Alinka's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> been learning lots of things. Yeah. Uh, we've got a question from, yeah she's been learning to talk which is yeah. pretty big. We've got a question mm. from TJR Floyd Defan says, David and Polly, when the two of you first got together, did you think you'd still collaborate in 2022 or even remain together 28 <gasps> years later? I never had any doubts that we'd still be happily together after however many years it is or could be. And, I mean, it is um, 
an incredibly long, I mean, a working relationship. You have been in one or two bands in the past. Yeah. How does this differ from those sorts of collaborations? This is so, it's fantastic. It's been really, really the best time of my life, the time we have done things together, including the Division Bell Pink Floyd one and the two solo albums I've sort of done since. It, 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 um, it's brilliant. What do you think is the secret of your collaborative success? She's brilliant at everything. Words. Lingo, what the fuck? The <laughs> and I can knock out a tune or two. And it fits. I think what, what I think the secret of it is that we're happy to take turns. And I think that... that it's just sunk her fist. She just oh sunk her fist into the heart the of the bed. Days pen. and days of preparation. <laughs> it takes quite a long time to make stinging nettle flour, you know, Alinka. Actually, you, Charlie, how do you make stinging nettle make, bread? To make ye old stinging nettle bread, you must collect one bushel of stinging nettles and yeah. grind into flour in the traditional way. Ooh, you have to dry them first. And then make bread in the usual manner. Yeah, but how, how, what's the proportion of flour to stinging nettles? Uh, random, completely. Yeah, random. But it's absolutely yeah. delicious. Yeah, it's delicious. Um, the stinging nettles have to be dried out for a long time before you dry them up. Just I'll trying to see if we've got any more. Oh, we've got some live questions that have come in. Thank you. Mm. It's a shout out to, oh, oh, poop, the connection is dropping, but maybe worth apologising and pointing out you're on terrible signal. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not happened previously, doing this a few times. Oh, you pop down there. Let me go look at this. Uh, the connection is really bad. Oh. That's Gabriel. Gabriel. Um, okay. How do you get to the little thing that says that you're on the right? Adjust the dongle position. Adjust the dongle position, right? Well, okay. okay. Oh, cool. Is, is it any Great. better now? I don't know who to ask. But well, ask the people. Is, it, is the connection better? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see what's going on now? Oh. Can you ask Owen? The technology is. Oh, Can I ask Paddy or someone? <laughs> No, it doesn't seem like anyone's complaining about the connection, so let's get on. We're okay. still waiting for a competition winner, so answer the riddle. Um, and let's move on to the next thing. So we've talked about your working creative relationship. It's actually, would you say it's sort of fairly equal and even? Well, it's not equal. When um, we're working on my project, it's not as equal. You know, and when Polly's working on her book, she's in charge. It's, so it, it's not really a matter of things being equal. It's just taking it's turns. Just, it's taking turns and, yeah. and dictating what you would like to do, and the other person agrees. <laughs> easy, isn't it? So easy, yeah. No, I mean, I mean the, the great luxury has been taking turns, mm. and because I mean now obviously Romani is eighteen and we no longer have children, <laughs> so now we are just free to do, you know to just work all the time. But because yeah. we were both quite driven, you know, me with writing, David with music, and sometimes collaborating with those two things together but on the whole each of us sort of obsessed with the project we always had the thing where one of us would be doing our thing and the other one would be mm. in the supporting role so one of us would be putting the gardenia on the desk yeah. and the little sandwich and the other person not. from from a sort of outside perspective or not entirely outside but uh, it seems to me that that, that the, the divide your perspective is outside well it's outside your creative partnership okay. um, yeah. seems like you've sort of m moved more into each other, so it's actually harder to tell when one of you is working on your own project and the other yeah. one is just in a sort of ministering angel capacity. And actually, you know, it's more and more like you're just both working on exactly yeah. the same thing together. Well, um, that's, that's a good observation. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think this audio book is kind of more yours than it is mine. <laughs> it's so you've got a very Ooh, good and touch the mic equal <laughs> um, <laughs> little girl. Clear off. Beast. Okay, go to granddad. There you go. Okay, come down. <laughs> Sit here. Be you've got a very good yeah. and equal working relationship. One of the one of the themes in your book is is this idea of the muse and that, yes. that women at certain points in history and in the, off now. you know now um, uh, sometimes are put into these roles mm. of just um, well you can explain better than I can. Well, I'm just putting the, the making the, the circumstances sort of beautiful for the man yeah. to create his work. I mean, I kind of my line on it is actually, 
that, although it's not maybe not true throughout history, but in, in modern times, the idea of the muse is basically a sort of mummy. <laughs> you know, somebody who just says, well done, baby, you know, you're doing really well here. Yeah. Here are some lovely things to help you create your work, and yeah. I'm just here admiring your work and hoping you'll do some more and that you'll do really well at your work. Whereas and nowadays, I think that that's a sort of outgrown role now that... And in your book, one of the examples of this is Leonard Cohen and Marianne Illum. Yes. And she puts the guard, the, the eponymous yeah. guard, uh, yeah. the, the Gardenia and, and the sandwich on his desk. Yes. And so now let's have a reading from Leonard Cohen, yes. enabled potentially by well, I mean, Marianne. He, he couldn't have written this without Marianne creating the beautiful world yeah. for him to, have, to observe yeah. and to write as yeah, but you wouldn't did. say that it was a a collaboration necessarily. Well, it, it's it it's is, more like she enabled what him. What is a collaboration? Well, it's hard to, to it's say. It's sort of like one person denies themselves in order for the other person. Yeah, but well, I don't know what she yeah. was denying. She was very happy to serve. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds <laughs> terrible. <laughs> in yeah. in her circumstances, yeah. it's, it's, it's complicated. Really. It's complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to in introduce? Well, this is a sort of beautiful... So here we are. We are in Katsikas, obviously, on Idra, or at least that's what we are, in a group hallucination. That is where we are. And this is a beautiful piece that Leonard Cohen wrote about Idra and the harbour. And Yanina's going to read it. Here was the harbour, crowded with white <laughs> ships. The gulls showing how much silver there was in sunlight as they fell out of the sky like handfuls of polished rice, or climbed in smoky squadrons at the sun until their wings turned silver and they descended again to astonish the floating garbage. Who doesn't give his heart to things that soar, kites or jet planes or sharp distant sails? I try to give more than my heart. I try to yield my loathing, my ambition, all my sicknesses. I tried to give away a new desire which I had hardly suspected but which was growing violently in the metal sunlight, like a germ culture suddenly surrounded by its own ideal conditions. The gulls continued their cold acrobatics and refused to bear the smudges of my uneasiness. I think that more than hunger, the sky was their master. They performed for the endless blue sky, confetti for some vast ceremony, an eternal wedding. Give what you want to the gulls. The sky is not satisfied with the smudges of your character. It demands stories. Of men, the sky demands all manner of stories, entertainments, embroideries, just as it does of its stars and constellations. The sky does not care for this trait or that affliction. It wants the whole man lost in his story, abandoned the mechanics of action, touching his fellows, leading them, hunting the steps, dancing the old circles. The sky wants diagrams of our lives. It stores them like little curious wristwatches. They are our wedding gifts. Oh, such a lovely display. Mm. That was lovely. And what should we do next? Perhaps we should have another song, and we'll see if, if we get some more questions in. If there's a competition winner, I think we might. We're gonna. So we've we've got a competition winner. Well done. We don't know who it is. We're gonna scroll back through. Um, the, 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 those, the eagle eyed will have spotted that the passage I read out is a reference to Leonard Cohen's song, Famous Blue Raincoat, Four in the Morning, yeah. the end of December. And now here's another song that <laughs> no, we all here's love. not that song. Here's not that song, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, from a completely different direction. This is a sort of country and western, well, well known. Grand Parsons song has been covered by dozens. Um, called we Hickory Wind. We love it, we play it around the campfire on other occasions, so we thought we'd do it tonight. In South Carolina There are many I remember the oak tree We used to climb But now when I'm lonesome I always pretend 
But I'm getting the feel Of hickory Started out younger, had most everything. All the riches and pleasures. What else could life bring? But it makes me feel better. It begins Calling me home Hickory Wind It's a hard way to find out But trouble is real In a far away city With a far away field But it makes me feel better Each time it begins Hickory wind keeps calling me Hickory Slightly cut out on the live stream. Uh, oops. But, oh my god, um, we still got so much we we still want got, to say. We still got a few things to say, so we're going to post this video and have you all see it. Yeah. Um, so thank you for that. That was a beautiful song, lovely. Um, the country and western always goes down. Yeah. Unconnected to that, tonight is World Book Night. One of the things getting people through probably is books, reading, losing themselves in other worlds, that's something that people have been saying yeah. about your book, that it is, you know, stepping through those pages is like taking a holiday onto the Greek island of the Hydra, and that's an amazing thing. So maybe uh, everyone could tell us a bit about what they're reading at the moment. Okay. Um, Daddy, do you want to go first? Um, I'm um, started but put down because I was so busy and about to pick up again Rick Samada's book, I Never Said I Loved You. Mm -hmm. um, which is a memoir, which is a, a wonderful way of making misery so funny. <laughs> I think. Yeah, yeah, it's a skill. <laughs> and, right. um, it's it's a very yeah, it's a very hard one to do, and it, I think that um, from what I so far read, he does that brilliantly, and I'm really looking forward to continuing. Right, lovely, that's Rick Samadas. I've never said I loved you, yeah. Romany. Well, Charlie. <laughs> um, so Yanina gave me this book. A while ago, and it's called *The Good Terrorist*. *The Good Terrorist* by Doris Lessing. And from what I can gather, it's about gender and identity and maintaining your identity under quite a conformist society. And is that right? Without sounding <laughs> or more, more maybe how. Um conventional gender roles can still mm. be in a supposedly unconventional mm. from communities. From memory, isn't it sort of about loads of people who are just like trapped in a house together? Mm. No, they're and then they do No, they're squatters. Oh, they're squatters all in yeah. the house and all just tearing like, each other to bits. They're still yeah. like, cooking all the food yeah, yeah. and like, 
it's all yeah. it's quite related quite to Polly's book, I suppose, yeah. in that sense. Quite like about these yeah. um, kind of alternatives. And she's so such a brilliant writer. Yanina, what are you reading? Um, I'm reading mostly on the Kindle, so I don't have the book to show you, but it's actually one book that I'm reading with my reading group, which I would really recommend as well, is to read with other people and then discuss it, because it's a great way to have connection to people outside of like your current situation. It's really nice, uh, but it's mostly theory. It's called Staying with the Trouble by Donna Haraway, but at the end of the book she has sort of more of a fictional bit called the Camille stories, which are really great about like uh, sort of very also very relevant to the current situation of our relationship to the earth and things like mm. that. I'm actually really um, struggling to read at the moment. I guess it's sort of like I don't know before people go to prison they think you know great I'll have this opportunity to do so much reading and then they find actually you know there's just too much inside their head and so I've actually not really been able, I've also finished writing a book of my own, so I've not really been able to read, but the last book that I read and absolutely loved and was just, you know, I, it was sort of just before coronavirus and I was reading it on the bus and it made me laugh so much I spat all over myself on the bus, which if you did now, you know, you'd probably get beaten to death. Oh, they wouldn't um, dare touch you. Yeah, but it's um, Sophie Hayward's The Hunger Games, which is a memoir. Hungover Games. Hungover Games. The Hungover Games. Sorry, The Hungover <laughs> Games. You can see how much my mind is on another thing. Um, and it's absolutely brilliant. It's so, is. so funny. It's yeah. so funny. And it's out. Uh, it's it not quite out yet. I managed. I pinched someone's copy. Mine. Uh, your copy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think yeah. it's a fantastic book. But it's out, it's out very soon. That's, yeah, yeah, it's a brilliant memoir about, about, about motherhood and being a single mother, basically. Yeah. She's feeding yeah. gravel um, to the dog. No, no, it's yeah. dog business. It's dog yeah. business. No, yeah. it's gravel. Uh, and what are you Okay, so um, I have. I am also finding it incredibly hard to read, and I've always used reading as a great sort of escape, and this ability to live in another world. But uh, the last book I read and loved, which actually is relevant to On an Island, is William Wall's Grace's Day, which is a beautifully written book about people living in isolation on islands. It's, I thoroughly recommend it. He's absolutely amazing. And I also I love Anne Tyler, and she has a new book out called Redhead by the Side of the Road. And I am reading in the middle of the night at the moment because... I can manage the daytimes because they're quite busy and because nature is so beautiful, but then in the middle of the night I wake up and that's when I need something to take me out of this current world and into another one. And I thoroughly recommend Anne Tyler, any Anne Tyler, but this is the new one. All right, lovely. Well, thank you everyone for watching. If you were watching last night on Facebook, sorry that we cut out halfway through the broadcast. Hope you've managed to catch us again. And congratulations to the competition winner who we will reveal on my mum's Twitter Facebook. at some point. No, on your Twitter. On my okay. Or on your Facebook. Whatever. Okay. But now it's it's check both. But now it's time for everyone to go outside and, and, and all clap, hail and to the NHS. Clap the NHS, yeah. 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 But they're watching this tomorrow, so that I will know, already but happen. But now, know, now but that's what we're going is, to do. This is now. All right, so thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Gosh, technical expertise is perfection. <laughs>